everyone. Welcome back to UE5 BP Guru. Uh, I apologize if I sound a bit raspy and a bit off. Uh, it's because I've got a terrible cold. Um, but we're going to try and do the next episode anyway. Um, so if there's a couple of cuts in this, it's probably where I'm just coughing my lungs out. And uh, hopefully there'll be no code changes or anything like that. There shouldn't be. Just me coughing my lungs up. So I do apologize. Uh, I'm going to create a new folder, and I'm going to call this Sounds. Um, and the reason for this is because we're going to finish off our eating and drinking. Uh, at least the basic side of everything anyway. And um, because I don't have any animations, I'm going to use Sounds instead to um, correlate the, the, the action of eating and drinking. Because we won't be able to see anything. So... Let's open this folder up. I I did find a couple of sounds. Um, just one eating and one drinking sound. It's a very short sound, but I will play them for you now. There's the eating, and that's the drinking. So um, we'll use those to um, drive how we're doing everything, like so we know something's actually happening. There's one other thing I want to change before we actually get into the code too. If we go into our third person character, we need to find the items. Where's our items? Items, here we go, sorry. Um, and what we need to change is our food strap. Uh, what I need it to include is, um, there's nothing here to determine whether we're gaining thirst or we're gaining hunger. There's nothing here to determine what sound we should use when we use this stuff. Um, so there's a couple of ways we could do this. Um, you could put, you could create an enum uh, and call it food enum and uh, water enum and, and etc. We could do it that way, uh, which I still might do it that way. Uh, that way we can create a switch and, and have the different actions we want to play out, play out. Um, The only thing is, is if we if we do it, um, I think the enum is the best way to go because even if I was like, okay, I'll just add the sound item in here, the variable in here, and just play whichever sound I assign it, the thing you're going to find is that we still need to determine whether we're adding to hunger or thirst, right? And the, and the switch enum is going to be the best, probably the, the quickest and easiest way of doing it. So let's just go ahead and create a new enum, and we'll call this... Um, Food enum, very simple. And from this, all we need to do uh, is we'll add food. Now you could add different food types in here. If you wanted different um, animations to play, or if you wanted different sounds to play, you could add like bottle of water, lake water, you, you know, you could have like small food, medium food, large food, you know, and, and they'll play different animations. Or you could have like box, like cereal, so it, it if you play Daisy, you'll know this better, but when he eats from a can, he um, uses the same animation he uses when he's eating cereal, but if he's eating apple, he'll use a different animation and bring it to his face. Um, or like he'll pinch his fingers, or, you know, there's different animations depending on what food you're using. And doing this, you could do the same sort of thing. So you could have it that it's like, oh, it's a pick animation, pick food, or food to mouth, you know, or you could have bottled water, uh, cupping hands for water from like a lake, you know, there's, there's, there's lots of different things you could do here. Uh, and, and you could split it out. So that's kind of up to you how deep you want it to go. Um, but we can do that. And then what we need to do in here is just add that enumeration. So we'll call this uh, food enum and grab that, put it into there. And we'll just call this food type. And then we should be able to better uh, and so I mean you still could put the sound variable in here, obviously. You, you like you if you want to keep it that you don't have as many uh, different types of food, like you could do it that way if you want to. Um, don't let me stop you. So now that this is all compiled, there shouldn't be any errors, but we should now be able to break this and get that food type. Now, what I want to have happen is I want this to actually feed straight into a function. That way. Uh, we can plug this up and we'll call this, um, where's our function here, rename it. And we'll call this uh, use food. 
Um, and if we open that up, we should now have this food strap come in. And the first thing I want to do is uh, do another switch on enum. Like so. Now, the great thing is, is we don't need to do too much here uh, because we're just adding this hunger to our players' vitals here. And I just realized this, these should probably be floats as well. To make, to make it uh, match up a little bit better, we, we should probably use these as floats, like so. There we go. Now, I will have to re-enter the information for those food items, um, but that's okay. So, what we need to do now is play sound. That's the first thing we want to do, because we need that sound to play. Um, now, this is where it would have been easier just to play the sound at the end and, and just have it play out whichever one you want. I mean, that's that's fine. You can do it that way. Um, what I do need to do, though, is find my sounds. Let's bring this up here so I can actually still see it outside of the content drawer. Content. Uh, whoa, I've gone probably a little bit too far. Where the hell? Third person. Uh, and then we want sounds. And we want eating sound, which will go into the food. And we want the uh, heavy swallow, which goes into there. Now, um, I probably want to make a new item for thirst, because uh, I don't actually have a thirst item, so I'll do that in a moment. Um, but what we do need to do first is um, we need to... I actually probably should have brought the whole food item information in here. So maybe it's better to get our equipment item and break it um and do that instead i i feel that's a far better solution because we're going to need to use like things like the quantity to determine whether we still have something in that um in that stack so um don't forget to refresh the function because um it will uh, have a bit of a fit so now we don't have anything clawing us to this so that's good we can actually move this wherever now we want to use available space so now that we've got that um all we need to do now is uh remove our hunger and thirst or add to it should I say we want to add so we want to get our current hunger and we also want to get our current thirst like so we want to um, add this together uh, via, let's just grab another one of those, right? And plug that into there. And this is the hunger gain, and this is the thirst gain. But what we also want to do is, whatever that comes to, we want to clamp that uh, float. And the minimum obviously doesn't matter in this scenario, but what will matter is the maximum because we don't want it to go higher than what our uh, hunger and thirst is. That's why we have our maxes. So we put our max hunger in there and we put our max thirst in there. And um, then all we need to do is set that current thirst like so. And plug that into there. And if we just kind of neaten this up a little bit, we should have our max hungers and max thirst all sorted for the time being. Now, there's one other thing we do need to do to finish this off to make it perfect. Uh, and that is we just need to check the stack amount, what how many we have. So if we take our current equipped item, and we can do this on uh, the same line. So most of this stuff needs to be separated, but this shouldn't need to be because we're just doing this. So uh, what we need to do is um, what we need to do is uh, actually I should have kept that broken. So that's fine. We break this. Um, we need to set a member within there, which will be our oh which would be our quantity and what we want to do is take this quantity and minus one from it and do that and from there that should be our quantity set uh, we need to also do this and um then what we're going to do is we're going to break this new equipment item 
I know that sounds a bit crazy. And we're going to see if this is equal to zero. And if that's true, if that's true, we're going to set our equipment item to blank. And if it's false, we do nothing. We don't do anything. We leave it as is. Um, okay, so that, in theory, should be our working hunger and thirst. Uh, oh, I also need to add that into there. There we go. So it goes back into that line. Uh, that should be, in theory, it working. Now, to test, we... Uh, oh, there we go. We need to let our vitals go down a little bit. But while we're doing that, we'll grab a few uh, apples and we'll grab that. Oh, wait there. It, it won't work. The reason it won't work is because I haven't actually updated these values in here. So let's do this. And oh, it's automatically gone to food. So that's fine. And it's kept its food gain and its thirst gain. So that's good. Uh, this will also now. The only problem with this is that there's nothing here to do both. So for now, we're just going to concentrate on doing one or the other. Now, I don't have a thirst item. I'll, I'll try and create one from now until the next episode. But uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the donuts. Donuts. We've all we all know this, right? Everybody knows this. It, it's common knowledge that donuts quench thirst like a crazy person. I was going to say uh, MF, but <laughs> I won't. I won't on this channel. I don't swear on this channel. That's naughty. Uh, so I'm going to just chuck a couple of extra donuts down so that I can uh, test my thirst as well. So I, I just want to check. Yeah, there's water and food. So we've got an item now that, that uh, quenches thirst and hunger. So now we just need to wait for it to go down a little bit. Uh, and then we can uh, we can test that bad boy out and see what happens. Uh, it might not work. Who knows, right? Um, grab that, grab that, and grab that. Now let's go to our inventory. Let's equip the... the I clicked exit. Why did I do that? That was so silly. Oh, i got to remember that exit doesn't actually exit out of menus. It exits the whole damn engine. Why do I forget that? It's surprising when I'm testing on a daily basis how much that happens. But, uh, okay, let's do this. And then we do that. We close the inventory down. If we change to T, we have a donut in our hand. If I click, I heard the thirst sound. Two, three. And I punch. But now the, the skeletal mesh has not updated. So that's something I need to do. Fine. Now if I change to an apple, you can see my hunger going up. And eventually I'll start punching because I run out of apples. Now, that's pretty cool. Okay. Right. Brilliant. Uh, now, uh, what do I want to check? Now, I just I do want to check my current hunger. As opposed to max hunger. Current thirst. Opposed to max thirst. That's 100. Right. Okay. Great. That's good to know. Um, now, one thing I do need to do is if this is true... We need to set that item slot, set skeletal mesh asset to blank. And if we test this again, we should have it that um, it uh, goes down. So, um, let's jump down. Let's do that. Because again, we shouldn't be able to punch when we have an item in our hand, right? Because we should just use the um, relevant the relevant thing right so we can punch we can punch we get ourselves an apple and we eat now interesting it looks like that, I, that icon's a bit cut off and I'm not sure why that's doing that so I might have to investigate but the water one's working fine and then eventually we go back to nothing that is working surprisingly well uh, I don't understand why the, um, see, like, the uh, I'm just going to test this food thing one more time. So it's it's full, and it's going down. Uh, it is going down, and if I eat now, it only goes up slightly. So what have I done there that's not quite correct? 
what I'm going to do on an event tick. Just to test this, I'm going to do a print string. And what I want that print string to tell me is what my current hunger is. And um, we'll, we'll just see what happens, basically. Okay, so my current hunger is going down. It's going way, way down. It's going down very slowly, actually, uh, which is fine. Now, if I get an apple, if I eat, huh, it's not actually increasing my current health, uh, my current hunger. Okay, interesting. That would explain why. Oh, ah, I'm such an idiot. Oh my god, I figured it out. There, current hunger, done. Now it should work. Right, let's, Jesus, no wonder. I'm lowering my current health every time, so the thing's getting confused. I bet any money someone, somebody in the comments uh, saw that and was like, You fool! It was this! Uh, there we go, and it goes back to 100. In all honesty, I feel like this could be slower going down in the future, but because, um, I don't know, how long does that give you, right? If it's 0 0.1 a second, that's 10 seconds for every one. Uh, so that's like 100 seconds for 10. So you got about a thousand seconds. So you got about five minutes, six minutes worth of time before you have to eat something. So I feel like it could be lower, maybe a little bit, but for now, that's actually uh, it's pretty good. So we have uh, working first and hunger now. You can increase it. I would lower the figures if it was me. I would lower the figures because look at me. I'd be running crazily to get food right now uh, if it was a survival game. I think those numbers need to come way down. Um, to give players an opportunity to actually get a head start in your game. But that's your choice. You change those figures how you want. Uh, but overall, it's a working system. So I hope you've enjoyed this episode. Uh, it took us a little bit around the houses to get there, um, but we got there. So thank you so much guys for watching, and uh, I will see you in the next episode. Much love. Take care. Bye.